Oh, Talking Schmidt. Yeah, that's the name okay. of the podcast. Oh, Talking Schmidt. Oh, nice, nice ring to it. Look at this. Talking Schmidt. Oh, <laughs> I get it. I get it. Good afternoon, good morning, good evening, and whatever else time of the day. This is Schmitty with another episode of Talking Schmidt. And today on the episode, we have from Roswell, New Mexico, Mr. Joe Albert Valdez. That's right, kids. He's from the town where they have an annual UFO festival. Think about that. Anyway, when it's time to tickety tack, there's no one that does it better than Blood Wizard. Head on down to your local shop. Ask Blood Wizard Skateboards. Or visit BloodWizard.com for all your pondering needs. Tickety tack. Hey, it's Corey at Blue Plate, 3218 Mission Street. Come see us. Meatloaf. Fried chicken, deviled eggs, Dollar Olympia beers. We're here every day of the week. We got a garden and we got smiles on our faces. Come let us make you happy. Buy up. Support. Support D troops. Support the pod, man. Like a lot of guys are like, I donate money. I donate money. It's like, dude, donate money and get a shirt back. That's called buying a tea. Life goal right there. <laughs> if you want to step up your game, buy a hoodie. Hell yeah. If you really want to step up your game, buy a hoodie, a t-shirt, and a beanie, and just go fucking full out talking Schmidt. Be that dude with four logos on at the same time. Go to the mall and get heckled. <laughs> Put it all on video. Send it to me. And you'll win a prize. What do you think? Should we go back to Joe Valdez? I'm running out of material. Uh, this is Joe Albert Valdez talking, talking in Schmidt with you live. Yeah. Here we go. Holy cannoli. It's cool. Like tonight is the night. <laughs> yeah. Uh, big dogs in. Do we really want to be here? Oh, everything changed. We on? Schmitty. Talking Schmidt. Talking Schmidt, dude. <laughs> You're going to come out different. <laughs> Shit my pants, lad. Your Rolodex is fucking deep. Holy shit. It's right. about the ones. The ones. The ones. Who is this guy? He thinks he's tough shit. What's up? Come on, Smitty. What the fuck? Tell the skateboard police to come get me. What is happening? I'm here for Greg Smith. Yeah! Yay! Yeah, Greg! Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. If you've watched the Dime Contest or my recent uh, China Banks documentary, saw everyone doing their salutations, well, our next guest is the man they are all honoring. This is Joe Albert Valdez, live. <laughs> How are you, my friend? Goodness, uh, dude, it's so uh, theatrical. I love I love the, the intro. So, we gotta keep it. We gotta keep it entertaining. Otherwise, gotta, people gotta keep it robust. It First right. ten seconds are the most critical moments of YouTube, <laughs> from what I've heard. <laughs> oh, I take it. That's true, man. I mean, you know, it's the the first. It's like the first. Those few first seconds is is make it or break it. And we're back. Ooh, bedroom attire. I love this. <laughs> bedroom attire. I know. I live. I live kind of. You know, outside my window is just. Full of life, a bunch of trees, squirrels, <laughs> squirrel habitat. Yes. You know, it's, it's cool, man. I don't know. It's like their little kingdom over here. How are you living? You good? Yeah. Turned 46 now. And, uh, you know. Hey, we never say our stop, age. It doesn't stop for nobody. We never say our age. We got to <laughs> Really? I don't know. I was told that. Like, you want to make everyone think you're still 22, always. Yeah, well, truth is better. <laughs> I don't you know. I think so too. I'm 50. I, just I, I don't turned... reg I don't regret. I don't regret the years that have gone by. I just I miss them most mm. of all. But you know, like I'm not one of those who like, oh man, life's too short. You know, oh you know, life's too short if like you do it if you're if you're missing the picture of what's passing you by. You yeah. know, you gotta look at what the real picture is, what it is that's what you're meant to be, what what you're meant to be doing. It took me a lot of years to figure what I was supposed to do. And like, even up to now, like I just been kind of going with the flow of everything, but you know, for the most part, just giving it my best and, you know, in the skateboarding time, you know, 
I was kind of like, this was my uh, skateboarding for me in the Bay Area where, when it all began. It was It was kind of like coming to an open canvas, you know, and it's fresh start. You know, it was a fresh start for me. But Well, let's talk about it. Um, Roswell, New Mexico is where you're from. Yeah. I mean, let's talk about that. Like, uh, that's uh, pretty close to where the UFO crash, alleged UFO crash sighting was. Have you ever been to the UFO festival down there? I heard they have an annual um, festival. No, you know, it's all really been kind of alienated out there for me for oh. the most part. Like, well, like alienated me, like everything has been kind of like, advertised you know alien this alien that little statues little alien trolls everywhere mm. you know, it's, it's been kind of the, the the thing for the city that's kind of made it thrive was having the tourists know that you know hey this is where it all kind of like happened nearby i guess apparently it was like in some kind of field far out well it's there's a bunch of field you know it's all like flatland land desert like out there mm-hmm. so that's the the climate out there and um, so like yeah, man, like a UFO apparently crashed sometime in like 1952 or something. Really? Yeah. Something like that. Not long ago, but geez, like, you know, I don't know. It just makes you think like, what what, what was really going on? Like, what like, Could this have just been a story that they wanted to create and twist, you know, kind of like throw everybody up for a twist? Or was it, is it real? And, you know, it's kind of hard to believe. Yeah. It's kind of like voting, right? It's like, who to believe? <laughs> <laughs> everybody's all about this crazy i've you know i've never voted in my entire life and huh. that's okay i don't know why i'm saying that now but it's like whatever people seem to really be into it though they seem to like make one single decision is like a make it or break it for them and it's like it's, i don't know like the life should be more i don't know like what do you think i don't know forget all that yeah Rosal, well, new mexico well- what we try to do on this program is not talk politics, but I would just say the real quick answer for me is that if you're going to complain about things, then you need to be active and try to help change those things. If you don't care about what's going on, then don't vote. Yeah. But if if you care, then the only way to make improvement or change, and this yeah. isn't for politicians because I, I was in that mind frame for a long time, but for my brain, it seems like the the local things are the more important things. Like, do we want yeah. abortion or do we not want abortion? Like, if you care about that, you got to vote about it. Yeah. You know? So those are the things I would say. But I try to keep politics aside because my grandma told me no politics at the dinner table. We want to enjoy each other. Yeah, that's the, what that's what I should be about. That, what, what, oh man, I love that. That um. Your grandma used to push that. <laughs> yeah, it was heavy. So cool. um, well, tell me, you told me the story, but briefly tell me what the story about you coming to SF. It was kind of a dream, right? Yeah, you know, it came to me. I was actually living in Denver. Um, I was out there in Denver living with Sean Mitchell in this apartment. Me, him, and some few girls. And it was it was quite an experience. You know, I woken up and everybody had, was still asleep and it seemed like it was one of those dreams that were like it was real like me waking up and seeing everybody there like i was like that's how the dream was like me being in san francisco was like how i how i felt like how i'm talking with you now like so real mm. um, and and it was just like a calling it was so bizarre because like i don't know like i i really f- felt there was more of a like an attraction to this dream and i waited till like you know everyone was up and sean was up and you know i was like bro like you're not gonna believe it but this dream i've been you know I, i've really waited you know till like he was up and fully awake and i felt like it was more special it was just like no ordinary dream but yeah man it really did come to me in a dream i felt like this was the sign you so, know that i think re- everyone waits <clears throat> who everyone is, is looking for in life you know a, a something a, a a signal or a sign of like if you're ever stuck in life and you don't know which way to go and you're just kind of waiting for something you're kind of like in the middle of everything and you know and uh waiting for some kind of change and having to come across this dream was i think that was the thing and i just took advantage and yeah um the next morning like 12 hours later, like I was driving out here, you know, that's incredible. Uh, 
that was your first time, right? You had never been to San Francisco and then you had a vivid dream of it. Like you knew it. Yeah. Like it was like, I need, and you know, I think it was like a lot of it, like inspired me to like make this so big and like more important than like just a a normal dream. Um, You know, I felt like, you know, growing up that time, my, my state of mind and my, my well being was very like, kind of like, I don't know, so organic and like, kind of like a little hippie, hippie child, you know, on mushrooms, but I was sober, you know, just very in tune with like spirituality and just like the stars and just trying to find my way through like light and dark and evil and, you know, ricocheting through all these obstacles and just kind of like surviving somehow, you know, and then coming across this dream was like, oh my God, like the gods are like coming to me or like not gods, but more like something from the heavens have come to me, you know, like, Looking at it more of a just not just a dream, but like a calling, you know, and 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 you know, coming up, growing up, not really having much of a father figure or a parent parent foundation, you know, it's it's you know, I I had to like resort to like looking for signs in life, you know, and uh, this dream was definitely a, a sign because it was so real. Like I'm talking with you, you know, when you hang up and you know you go on with your little notes and stuff and your editing and whatever it is you got to do to make sh- talking Schmidt what is what it is you know <laughs> you got a tinker too so i don't know yeah no that's true you mentioned sean mitchell how when did he come into your life how did you how did you meet sean we met in albuquerque yeah so from roswell i moved to albuquerque at the beginning like spent three four years in albuquerque and then i go back to roswell spent three couple years there and go back kind of forth back and forth and sean came into my life like um, one of my trips to Ra- Albuquerque, um, I think it was like one of my second trips back to Albuquerque. And then, um, yeah, I've, I've met him doing tricks. Like, I, you know, I, cause I never really met anyone who could do tricks and he was doing tricks on the curve. That was like, he was doing like some shove it fakies or something. Oh my God. It was like, what you could do a kickflip? Like what? He was like kick flipping to axles, you know, like really easy. Uh huh. Um, and then we just, we just became best friends from there, but uh, started he, off at a very young. He kind of had a like. Would you say you guys had a similar approach to skateboarding? Like you kind of had a unique perspective on trying to like, like you said, make things look at something, see how everyone else is doing it, and then do it your way. Yeah. Well. Well, see, like that kind of. I think that has a lot to do with it. Yeah, Sean, Sean's way though like his 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 own style was just kind of like um yeah i guess he, that's a a good way of putting it schmidt yeah because you guys I would like was, mm-hmm. you would skate the city and like do some pretty like unique things like i remember wow. the van ness ledges and like i mean well, did you ever see you know those little those those like cement humps on market over there by like kearney and like market yeah yeah you know like they're like weird like like tombs of like cement right mounds of cement balls mm-hmm. or something right on the sidewalk sean he like he like no complied over one of those you know like with one foot flawless like you know he would just do stuff that just like man you just can't top just can't, right you just can't oh, top man it. but see like for me like because like I don't know, like, there's so much to play with in San Francisco, you know, the Bay Area, so many, so much terrain, um, you know, and like some of the legendary spots that I would find and like always like come across people who've done stuff that done documents on documentation on like video and that are in the magazine. Um, I would respect all those places, you know, and, 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 you know, my, my, what I what I wanted to bring to the table was something like more genuine and creative, something that, that you know, like for me, like stuff that no one's ever skated on, or things that never has been skated on. Period. You know, or mm. touched. But like, if I ever did skate something that someone skated, like I would always make, I would always try to do something different. You know, like, um. Do you remember what you were skating back then? Like as far as like your setup, like what trucks, what size wheels, like how big of a board, those kind of things. Um, I always liked riding like soft wheels for the most part, I think, cause it just helps me roll over shit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. 
roll over stuff. Oh, you can swear on here. This um, is- and um, yeah, but yeah, I like I like seven and a half inch boards. Oh, I know a lot of people like eight inch. Uh, I think now it's like gone to like eight and a quarter, maybe. I think eight point five is kind of what is 8. every. 5. Yeah, that's the standard now. It seems. Yeah, that's like it's like a little surfboard. <laughs> that's just too wide. I mean, I don't know. Was there was did you guys have any influences? Like, would you look through the mags or watch videos and like see like some of the big dogs and like, I love that guy. Did you have any favorites or anything like that? Um, I, I I was I was very always intrigued with all the the big big roles, big inspirators. Like, um, ah. Uh, there's so much to choose from, you know. It's really yeah. hard to say when when you have your own when you're on your, when you have your own self to worry about, you know. Um, true. So you didn't have photos up on your wall or nothing. No, no, never really had, never really had the opportunity to, you know. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I didn't. Yeah. Okay. Well, talk about, didn't you guys like when you first got here? You didn't have a place to stay, and you were staying up in the park for a bit. Oh my god for years yeah, it was just it was troubling yeah for some reason like i couldn't find a foundation for myself like i did a little bit but it just didn't really uh, something just wasn't working for some reason like i don't know like i seem to have had like the worst trouble of being successful i guess of somewhat like normalcy i guess in living um you know, because, you know, the cost of rent and everything is just so high, you know, and it's really hard to f- really find a niche for yourself in the Bay Area when there's s- it's so much and so crowded, right? Um, yeah, man, it just, uh, I don't know, it just, sur- sur- survival of the fittest, you know? Mm. But yeah, was there no, any did was there any incidents where like you got rolled up on or something scary or anything crazy happened while you were up there like at night and stuff? Oh, like in the like some of the times that I, I I know I've only slept in the park like a couple of times maybe maybe oh. like, maybe like once or twice just because like it rains when you get into the trees area because I guess like the the precipitation and like the droplets you know mm-hmm. would just come down on you eventually sometime in the morning early early so you would always get wet on mm-hmm. um so I, I and plus like it was never safe um in the park for me like man like. There's just so many homeless and random, like crazy, you know, not too many right in their head individuals, you know, just doing random shit in the park, random stuff in the park. I don't know. Like I used to like climb up on top of buildings and sleep on the rooftops. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah I would sleep on sometimes like I slept on the Wallenberg one time, a couple of times. Yeah. Cause Did like you-, dude, you couldn't be a bum and, or you couldn't be homeless or just like whatever, like, out of shape crackhead and be like climb the scale the wall of death and to try to get to where i'm sleeping all nice and snuggled you know like yeah you'd have to be like a ninja and like you'd have to be fit and you know to come mess around with me and plus like i would already done heard your ass like if you even came close <laughs> and whatever like i don't know dude i'm just like that's just my upbringing and living in the city for real like just pure ninja s- style you know like I don't know, but it just, it didn't really like, I didn't really have like a really nice home for a while until like just recently until like I really got into a relationship and, you know, just, just did all, started doing all the right things, you know, I guess. Okay. Yeah. I mean, the older we get, the wiser we get, we learn from our mistakes, right? Yeah. Not that I was doing a lot of wrong things. I just like, I knew like, you know, you know, there, there was some like, you know, instances where I did have some like, some holdbacks on like life and like, you know, just being, you know, healthy and, you know, just making smart decisions, you know, mm-hmm. I, you know, I don't regret anything, but again, like, you know, I, I did uh, have some time where I had to like, I stepped away from, from everything from uh, the scene and just, you know, family members, you know, and just people who care, you know? Yeah. Well, I got a, I got something I think this is going to make you smile. I talked to um, your old co-worker, good friend of mine, Matt O'Brien. Oh. And he said, you guys work together at Torre yeah. Fazione uh, yeah. in the financial district. Yes, yes. And he, here's what he said about you. He said, uh, 
Joe would skate at every chance, be a 15 minute break or lunch. He'd fly outside and rip in the middle of helping a customer. It did not matter. He'd say, excuse me and go outside and Ollie the fire hydrant, not your average skate rat. He was obsessed to a <laughs> level I hadn't seen before. My question for Joe would be, where did that singular focus come from and how was he able to sustain it all over all over all those years and in a healthy way? Oh, how did I sustain it? Wow. Um, like meaning like how, how did I like preserve it or? Yeah. Like you mentioned like the ninja it? thing. Were you in the martial arts or like, like you said, spiritual stuff, like, was that oh. a big part of your focus? <laughs> Dude, to tell you the truth, it's just the high energy. Yeah. Just, Ever since I was a young kid, like my mom would worry about, she'd always worry about me. Like something was wrong with this kid because I had <laughs> this amount, large amounts of energy that she didn't know where I got it from. Like, I don't know. Like, she, dude, like she'd tell me stories that would just be mind blowing and just like make you think like you don't normally see little kids do stuff like this, you know, in their diapers. You know, I was in my diapers doing weird shit. So mm -hmm. I don't know. I just had a bunch of energy. It was just natural. I just came with it. You know, I think God intended for me to have this power to 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 let it shine, you know, through no matter what I what I'm gonna do, you know, whether if it was gonna be in a diaper running around this parking lot in the rain, you know, <laughs> or or like, you know, turn it into like a, some some kind of like you know what what I did with skateboarding you know I turned it into like a light form you know I just mm. I just channeled it um but that's that's a wonderful story you know like I remember that actually you know like I think I was I think that that truthfully really happened <laughs> like, like we were at this fancy fancy Tori Fancioni it was an Italian rich rich high end right in the smack dab middle of the financial district you know, serving these, you know, corporate people, you know, like in suits all the time, you know, like Bulgari and Givenchy and, you know, just like high end dollars. Right. And I would, I remember doing this, like serving like this customer and grab my skateboard. And I said, watch this. Right. I think it was just like something cool like that. Like, and it was just like one of those where, where it was like, so it was okay to, have, and, and I was okay to and getting away with it was, it was just the thing. It was like, it was meant to be like, huh. no one was hurt. No one was like bothered or, but yeah, I think I, I, I did something like that and helping a customer while I was serving coffee and uh, just all he'd 180 over this hydrant <laughs> into the street while it was like traffic and people trying to get to work home or well, I don't know. Like, <laughs> man, I mean, uh, good times. Man. I can't, I'm so happy you shared that. Schmidt. Yeah, no, he said you were a big influence. Him and Matt Pales both reached out and said that you were a big influence on their skateboarding. Uh huh. That's, that's love. Yeah, God, I love them guys. No, for real, like Matt too. Like I, I saw him not too long ago at the um. What was it? Oh, we. Oh, at your video. Oh at right, your, yeah. At the at the theater. At China Banks last, yeah, yeah. His last. Mm -hmm. Yeah, him and uh, what's his name, uh, Matt Woody. Rodriguez, both of them, yeah. Pales and Rodriguez, both came down for that. Yeah, Rodriguez. Yeah, that was cool. Um, for the kids out there that don't really know the history, tell tell us a little bit about some of your favorites, like things that you guys mm -hmm. skated in the city. You know, maybe whether it was on video or not, or photos, or or just skating for whatever. But some things you remember, like obviously the China Bank sticks out. But like you guys did a bunch of crazy stuff. Like, <laughs> what are some of the stuff that you look back at and remember as being? either the most scariest or the funnest or like where you felt most accomplished, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, like um, I would have to relate that to like a lot of like market street skating, you know, late at night, two in the morning, you know, no, no one around, no one to bother you. I think that was always the best time to skate was late at night on uh, market street. You know, it was something about the edges on the market s street sidewalk. Hmm. You know the the smooth marble like like small ledge strip you know all along market yeah you know you could just do a manual for like as long as your legs can hold up <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like all you hear is like click 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 
it does look like the little lines between the cracks you know i think the the most funnest that, that was that had to be the most funnest like because it was just so like humbling and safe and innocent and you know it's not like only like just random random night crawling people would be out but you know mm -hmm. even they respected it you know like no one ever like bothered you uh, um but those 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 would be the, the the best moments like where i think i was my most like happiest i guess i you think know, back back in that I era mean, like it was definitely more skating from spot to spot like there were you probably didn't even get on the bus or anything that much. It was probably just pushing around and finding little nooks and hitting this and then keep moving on and hitting that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's for sure. You know, for all the, like the younger group of people nowadays, like they have spots that, you know, they're, yeah, they pull up in their car, they get out, they stretch, they try a few clips, they get back in their car, drive somewhere else. Yeah. Like, that's not how we did it. No, no, it was, <laughs> You had to, you had to travel the globe, man. You had to, you know, travel this the distance, and you know, this was definitely San Francisco. The Bay Area was definitely the place to do that. At, you know, mm -hmm. I was glad that the dream took place out here. <laughs> yeah, wondering what did you think of the video and how was it being at the premiere? Dude, I loved it. The small portion of like me talking, I, I don't think there was a, it was it didn't it didn't really like. The topic of me speaking there wasn't really much i didn't really i didn't really catch it much really yeah what was i saying something about uh, i forgot maybe because i i was just so excited it, uh, it yeah no I there's saying. a whole section for you like where uh, it's about all in behind the ball and like evan smith and everybody's perspective oh, yeah. Of it and, yeah and like okay. kind of what you were thinking and like what like was going on and then showing you oh, do the it. story uh -huh. yeah it's humbling because like how, how how many how many how many years had gone by you know up until like even to like this point in time where like you know it's just just a few seconds of your life can, has has made an impact you know and so much and how it's been such a big thing and not everybody's life but just how it's been such a, a an imprint and like the minds of creative thinkers and skaters, you know, uh, and, and just not even skaters, but even like creative, like, you know, creative thinkers, you know, who are, who, 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 who live life in an adventurous way and or fashion, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was so like special, you know, like, I feel like the purpose of me wanting to skate and and become something in 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 the skateboarding world was never to be like you know just to get like publicity or in the spotlight or oh hey film this film that you know mm. dude like i actually had to like i was very selective to people who who can actually film with me and i was pretty much like very stern too like and 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 like very 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 like private mm -hmm. you know but um you know it was um yeah that that was kind of like been my purpose and like in 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 wanting to be part of like if i was going to be anything in the skateboarding world it was going to be to be someone who like inspired or to be part of something that helped someone you know or or you know rather than just have your name on a picture or like magazine or like in shoes and yeah i mean who doesn't like free stuff here and there but you know, like I wasn't trying to get sponsored just so I can get free stuff. You know, I, my purpose in skating was to just be more of like help the creative thinking of like how skateboarding, or what skateboarding should be like, not just like what it is, like what everyone making it out to be like, just, you know, the kick flip over the same ledge, you know, like, I don't know, like there's so much more in the world in the world to be focused on and than just like one obstacle in one style, you know, this sense because like we all have like a style that we can offer, you know, and mm -hmm. the creativity to just make that shine, you know, like whether if it's on a skinny ledge or if, whether if it's on a bar or, you know, because I was never really technical anyways, you know, so I just I took what I was able and capable of doing which was the creative aspect of it. And I think it really came down from like being from Roswell where I didn't have too much really cool obstacles. You know, I, like the perfect bank would be like made out of dirt. 
right you know, or the <laughs> handrail was like that that just right height handrail had like a crack in front of it where you had to ollie five feet before the handrail you know just you know, all there's- these little all these little twists you know like just to be like just to have a good time in skating like it was like you really have to make the best out of little we had you know and coming to this big city i was just like man i'm not going to be doing the same shit everyone else is doing when there's so much more to be like out when there's so much more out there and there's so much more cool styles and it's like i'm not going to try to train my style to be looking like you know like carl watson's you know, mm. I, love Carl. I love Carl because me and Carl, we go back and, you know, he was one of the most humbling, like big wig pro skaters, man. I loved Carl, man, like, because he always showed love and always welcomed me with open arms at Union Square. And, you know, there's a few clips where like Carl was in the background, which I really love so much. Carl's you know, the best. He always just gave so much. You know, I remember one time he inspired me. He was like, dude, just focus on your breathing. Just because he was like, you know, I came to him. I was like, what can I do to make it? make it happen or possible or is it i think it started to break down like the, the physics of it uh, yeah. like technical i was like what <laughs> yeah oh man it's like i never thought to think about like the breathing part was a big factor of it but it's breathing has a lot to do with everything for sure it's like the key yeah. breath and water to, like those are the two most no, important i can understand things. though like because like right before you're about to like like bruce lee right before he gets hit you know you exhale so he's like muscle gets tighter doom you know so uh-huh. you, can, you can take the impact rather than oh i don't know like there's like <laughs> this technique to everything but yeah no i think you know just being different like in the skating was was the thing to was was my patent because you know well like the china banks thing you know like you have to respect the china banks right the people who had some history there mm. okay i know there's nothing to play around with and it's nothing to joke around with because there's some some big league stuff. So, you know, when I came stepped up to it, I was like, what would I do different that no one's ever done in it, that never been on no video, and there's no one's ever – I've never seen it before. And then yeah. I was like, I just thought of that thing, that transfer. And I was like, I thought that was a legit choice because I've never <laughs> seen it in a video, never seen anyone do it, never seen anyone play around. I've never even seen anyone skate on top of that. My my first thing was to, to try to ollie over – that ball but i didn't realize how big that thing was until it got up on top like no yeah. this thing is a monster yeah i'll just go around the damn thing i mean what was that like 1998 or something yeah this was no camera like so long ago you know like 25 years at least i know isn't that bizarre i'm still talking about it Ah, oh, gosh roswell didn't have any hills right it was flat flat yeah so did you learn to skate hills in San Francisco? Well, the, I mean, the best I could. Yeah, you know, um, you know, I mean, you had no choice, you know. It it changes. Yeah, make, it, it, make it or it, break it here, man. This is full the land of land of make it, you know, and it, either you're successful or you're just you just get recycled, you know. It's it's <laughs> it's no joke, you know. It waits for nobody, and you know, filth has to be cleaned up. But did you guys take like the bus route to the top of the hills and and do like backside ninth and any of that stuff? Yeah, we did a lot of we did a lot of touring like that. You know, we've done a lot of backstreet hill bombing, um, but it's nothing like nothing I've ever experienced before. Yeah, um, so cool. Yeah, the, the city's so, just a playground for skateboarding. Well, coming out when I did, you know, I, I you know I'm still like my baby prime of like knowing what I was meant to do. Mm. You know, like. And then finally touching base with San Francisco was like, that was the beginning of it. Like, mm-hmm. this is like, this is when I was like going to get serious. And then that's what it, you know, for the most part, like, you know, it just it became the, like, this is what I was meant to do. And I stuck it out. Well, I got to hear this part. Cause this is the part that intrigues me a lot. You kind of disappeared a little bit off, at least off my radar. Yeah. And all of a sudden, there's this thing called dime how did you and dime's relationship start and like i got to hear the history of this thing like it's oh, okay. really cool it's pretty it's pretty impressive because these guys were like been and just for I people that it. don't know dime is in canada like it's yeah. in Mont- I think Montreal. Quebec. 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 Quebec right yeah. so this is kind of like not like you know it's a little <laughs> removed 
yeah these these are guys who i like i i inspired from here in the bay area you know part of my inspiration sparked something in these in these young men's life you know when they were at the beginning stages you're like as i was when i came to the bay area you know as after i like made some videos i you know like seasons video and the limits i'm and this is like these are the videos that were like they had um they 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 um remember and watch religiously like throughout the years of their skateboarding you know and like this is what they like really looked into and looked up at as as far as like what really inspired them and got them motivated to like go and be creative so these dime boys really like wanted to like pay respect and homage and find me in the bay area but they didn't know how because yeah, I was, how did like, they find you they found me in the grocery store i was shopping <laughs> no way <laughs> i was doing instacart <laughs> I was doing Instacart shopping for the community, like folks, right? It's like an app where you can grocery shop and have it delivered to your house, like just all through your, like your smartphone or your computer, right? Yeah. So I'm virtually shopping for this customer inside of Safeway, or it was, I think it was yeah Safeway, and um, like I couldn't believe it. Like Antoine, I think it was one of the Antoine, one of the boys. Was like no way, is that Joe? Like you know, like yeah, and then like. It just turned turned out that we're like, hey, they asked me, hey, you drove all this, and like, or like, just it all started from there. Wait, so, so this is in San Francisco, though, right? Yeah, they came out here from there because they were going to do like this video. No, they were going to go. Yeah, they were. They wanted to do this video, the montage video for Dime, um, and they wanted me. They wanted to ask me too if um, this video that they were making, um was okay and then if i would be interested in like participating in, in their event you know so they came out here to find me to ask me but they also wanted to like they were also making this video too which was it's really bizarre but it was, it was intriguing because like these are guys that looked up to me they like they knew me for all these years but i didn't know them and then like how they they wanted me to be a part of like their dime tradition you know, so, which, so they which, came out with a video first, uh -huh. and then they were like, "We're going to start a contest series," or I don't know what they call it, but yes. I, I kind of call it a yeah. contest series. Uh -huh. Which there's already been five of them that I've been. Four of them I've been physically. The the fifth one, which was just this past year, which was just a couple months ago. Yeah, yeah. I called in live, right, to the audience. Yeah, it was like a skit that we did film pre rehearsed here. Ah. So that when 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 um when the event was up and going, like they were kind of like the crowd would be interrupted with a phone call coming in. You know, wait a minute, wait, audience, there's a call coming in. Wait, it's Joe Valdez. <laughs> wow, what? Hey, what's up, Connor? Wow, look at all those people. And I was like looking into the crowd, and then it just shows like the, it shows a video of me like on on the on the the bay on the Golden Gate Bridge. Hold on, on the China Banks, looking like I'm peering into like the audience. That you know, that's what it was. Yeah, it was cool. Dude, so that was, always, last, that was that was the fifth one. But those I was guys like, are creative. I love what they yes, do. It was such a cool little skit. Um, but yeah, they came out here to find me, man, and uh, how how mysteriously they did, how how it was just so random, super random. Um, but it was twice that it happened. I I you know Antoine would have another better recollection too. You should okay. you should try to call that guy. Yeah, hit me up with it after we're done. Send me his contact. I will. Yes, dude, that'd be awesome, man. It'd uh, be cool because he could he can lighten you up with a little bit of I'd, like. The I'd like to get his story on. See, running into you in the fr that's insane yeah like, no because so it right? happened twice it happened twice it was like the first time it was the second time you know they were filming um but yeah you know it's like these young guys who who had a vision you know like some of my creativity possibly could have created them to be you know, little video because we did videos too you know with like the limits and avenues and stuff like yeah you know like that could have kind of inspired them to do like their own stuff too which they turned into like live video because with this dime contest it's like you know it's like a contest but it's really not a contest it's like it's live i don't know it's like just like it's very like um what is it like when they're like when you're up on all these obstacles you know at once like you know like like an athlete like a train you know like 
Oh, it's like a um, some type of course. Yeah, like you know, like a course. Like yeah, that's how the challenges are. It's like a course. Uh huh. You know? Wow. Well, tell me what your first impression was like the first year you went, you didn't really know what it was. I mean, they probably gave you some idea, but like probably what you saw and what you were told were two different things. Like, uh, tell me about like being at that first contest and like having the, was that the, that was the first one where like everything happened. Um, Everything happened. What do you mean? Where it all happened? Like, like oh. didn't they start? Isn't that the one where like people had like they like oh. you came out like it was like a oh, almost like a that... wrestling match, right? Where like Joe Valdez, Sluggo, like different people. Oh no, that was the, that was, was the that, gladi- that was a gladiator. That was the gladiator challenge. Um, I had nothing to do with that, but like with the praise and stuff like that. That all came from like it all started with like um me doing it on the China banks. Mm. You know, like the beginning, like where it was actually like the reason why I did that was because like it was my last try to doing it because the security guards were coming. So I had to like gather my chi and I just did that naturally, just trying to be like humbled about like taking the last moment to be focused and to just like, you know, this was like the moment where I was telling myself I'm going to do it, you know. And then when you tell yourself that, you know, you do really become in, in with like things that that you have control of, you know, when you have control of like things in your mind and the moment and when you cease it all and you take control and, you know, you do, you can make things happen. So, you know, that was my way of showing myself, this is, this is me going about to do it. And it was going to be my last time, but I was going to do it and just roll away with it. You know, when you tell yourself you're going to do it, same thing. I mean, mad. I was like, yeah, I, that I for some reason like I don't know I was like because like when you bring your hands together your energy the channel you know has to be like precise so it's like my hands coming together was like a a ching of light you know like right. ching, yeah you know, well, what's it feel like when you see like however many people all doing it at once God, it's, and it's, like it's, it's, it's the it's, magnitude it's insane it's like dude the crowds when they're all doing it like the whole entire like thousands of people dude. I was like, they gotta make an emoji of like Valdez, you know, they or something like they should just they would. I would I mean they put me in a video game, you know? Uh, Did you see that? No. I'm in a video game. Now when you do the China banks, you'd be like Joe Valdez. Oh, you could do the Joe Valdez trick. Which like, game? Oh. Not Tony Hawk. It's right? called the Thrasher. Oh, really? Uh, no, I was in a Thrasher video before, but no, this is like a new one. Um Okay. I don't know. Neat. Um, well, so you went to four, you were actually at four of the five events. Yeah. Did you have, did you have a favorite year? Well, no, four. Yes. Um, uh, you know, the last one that they brought me out in was, 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 was the, was the fourth year. Um, well, actually I think I was in like, this is the fifth one or the sixth one. I've been in five I've only missed one. Okay. And that was, I think that was last. I can't that remember. That was the most recent one that you didn't go to. That was the one you Oh, this in. one. This one. But I wasn't yeah. with the video. Uh-huh. Right? Um, it, would ha- it probably was like the, the one before this one. Before okay. the pandemic. Yeah. Because I came out in a, in a they, they, put, they brought me out inside of a, on a, like, um, like a, um, a throne you know the brian's <laughs> like the little helpers yeah the yeah all of the guys that came brought me out as i was like laying down on this this they they made like this custom couch like like lavish like cleopatra right you know so and they had me like in this really big fur brown eskimo jacket and they just wanted me to just relax and just kick back like i'm like a god you know <laughs> and then they brought me out like cleopatra <laughs> on, oh, on their man. shoulders bro on their shoulders that, that's I amazing I, love like, it. Just there, I was like it was my idea oh really yeah so they collaborated with me they're like joe how would you want to be come out into the audience if it was like your choice like what would you like you know i was like you know i would like to come out like <laughs> royal you know royal like being being fed grapes you know they wanted to i was they were going to feed me grapes they're going to have like a, a person holding grapes for me too but uh, they thought that would take up too much time because it was like 
too little small too many small things can happen wrong you know it's just <laughs> although i forget the grapes forget the grape guy forget the grape guy. <laughs> i okay. love that i know but yeah dude I, I was like i wanted to come out royal you know like what's the best way and i was like i thought of cleopatra and i was like if and then they were like done they're like done <laughs> it's done so they That's... created us it's, it's beautiful i have pictures i'll just show you sometime yeah okay um what's going on you you have uh your own board too huh yeah who who's who makes that steven stefan stefan williams okay old og ski guy ski guy from back in the day you know he's, um he's actually from denver but he's been living here for years too like since i can remember you know when i started i actually met him in denver um but um you know i, I re-met him again while he was here when I ended up making my journey here, he had already moved out here, and um, he was he 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 happened to live next door to Trevor Prescott, oh. and he did some collaborations with Trevor Prescott, and you know did some some edits and some you know some 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 small projects with him, and you know they they've I, they've always like exchanged footage, you know, so he has a lot of Trevor's footage, you know, he has footage of me that you know people have rarely seen. Um, oh, nice. he's just playing with footage videos and just messing with it a little bit, just doing his thing. And, you know, he, he asked for me like <clears throat> that if it'd be all right, if like, you know, he made boards with my name on it. Cause he felt like you deserve, you deserve your name to be on a skateboard and hmm. you, you, you deserve to have people know who, who, who you are, you know, and like, you'd love to just make some skateboards and stuff. Cause I never really, well, I have had like cherry bombs, you know, sponsor before right um, and then i was on flow with like civilian clothing for a while and then i remember i even got on like um <clears throat> what was it globe tennis shoes yeah yeah i got on globe for a while yeah. um, so it was like some small cool things you know i remember when i was on civilian it was like really cool i was getting paid you know like the writers were yeah you know, like, like stevie williams you know pat wash pat washington and like yeah uh, yeah pat was McBride, I used to McBride, like them guys like they were getting paid but because i was on flow with civilian they were on tantrum oh, okay right? they were on tantrum and i was on civilian clothing um and so um it was funny like they just told me his, the guy that was like paying me they like, just don't let the boys know that i was paying you a paycheck because they they don't get as much and like <laughs> you're not even pro so it's like <laughs> i wasn't even pro but I was, I was on flow i was on civilian clothing and i was getting paychecks you know more than <laughs> some of the pros and i was like that's okay I'm, you know it's okay i don't talk business like that anyways so I, I, well you weren't on raza libre ever no they need to I was give on you civilian clothing you gotta get you some wheels oh i would love that i would love wheels man i never got on wheels before though actually I'll yeah. call a friend of a friend and he'll talk to a friend and maybe the, their people will talk to your people. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh big hey, respect for uh Trevor Prescott, rest in yeah. peace. He was a big part of he filmed a lot with you. Yeah, uh, you know, he was like one of the only guys I let film with me, tell you the truth. Mm. You, know, you know, you didn't film with the Russian twins? Oh no, not too much. No. Yeah. Safa? No. Safa a little bit, yeah yeah um a little bit of sadva for sure um only because he's like a homie yeah um, Sava's the homie <laughs> um and like you know like um dennis dennis i let definitely film with dennis oh my graph huh yeah um a little bit of theo um and then my main filmers were like um trevor mm. my photographer <laughs> i always loved patrick odell oh uh, yeah pat patrick. shot those photos huh yeah the china banks yep gosh yeah howard street him and john he did such a big thing with my foot my my I, I got like a whole like two pages you know like sequence <laughs> so sick. like two pages plus it was like another page in the back like and then i was in the back page taken up with the mean car no me and pat washington um shooting civilian clothing and like i yeah. had a hat so they had on it was sick. I remember. Huh. Yeah, that, it is such a rare. F you know, it's really hard to get those stuff anymore. You know. Yeah. Footage. Definitely. But, uh, yeah. 
the game got turned up like everybody's ripping now there's and there's so many people you know it's like hard like, no i'm talking about like old like documented like photos and stuff that i've been publishing like i've been in like big brothers um oh, I don't, to get I the I've actual slap, magazine think, yeah but like big brother you know oh, it, big brothers yeah um slap i was in slap for sure thrashers <laughs> Um, I, I don't think Transworld, that's the one I think it was never in Transworld, but like some of those editions, it's really hard to go back. Uh, you know, like some of the old school 411 videos, like I was in a lot of 411 videos too, you know? Oh, really? I, I remember I was back to back on those sometimes, you know, Say. I'd be like in a zine here in the Bay Area, I was in someone's zine. And then I'd be like in a in a four. I would do an intro. I would open up in the four one one. You know, ba, ba, na, na, you know na, just na, like na, oh, na, na, na. Dance, like oh shit, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. And then I like I can't believe they put me at the very beginning. You know, and like it's like what uh, out of all the people. So, you know, they sometimes like I really felt love. You know, and sometimes I like I loved a lot of the time. Sometimes when I would like what because it did happen a lot. I would pop up in like a art show or something or an art gallery, a photo, sh you know, like, you know, just whatever, like the artist was, whether it was a painter, photographer, whatever, but dude, like sometimes, you know, I've come across myself in, in galleries. Wow. You know, see my picture in, in our that's so, yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Dude, is that you right there? Like what? Oh my God. Even that was me. What? <laughs> How in the hell? <laughs> And you wouldn't know that because like you didn't you, you were never there but like you know i've had like times where like and then i was just like in a in a video in thrasher or something or you know a magazine or it's, <laughs> or you know when it started like when i started to be like in a lot of footage and documented you know like a lot of people would started to come out of the woodworks to try to film with me you know but mm -hmm. i kept it very very selective you know not that I didn't, you know, because it wasn't really about to, you know, because like filming with a lot of different random folks was just, it, it kind of put me in jeopardy. You yeah. want to be around people you're comfortable with. Yeah. Well, they kind of would want you to do other things too. Yeah. Like, oh, do it like this. No, like, do why like don't that. you do oh, this? Change. Wait a minute. I'm well, the one skating. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Just I like, don't tell you how to shoot the photo. Don't tell me how to skate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh always try to give me hey let's go to china banks and go let's go skate on that let's let's go film you skate on that a little bit or you know like, that's not really nothing to play around with you know yeah you know it's just like that was like you know shot a couple times for for individuals but it was it had to be done like that you know i had to go back and film again you know for my friend sam benning i did for him for a school project i did i went back and filmed it again that's right Cause he he asked me for help for his schoolwork homework and I thought it was gonna be like math problems or something but it was a video <laughs> it was a video it's like no it was actually it's a it's a video of like the Bay Area and like the streets and like you're gonna be the subject of it it's gonna be called the Joe Valdez mm. so he made a little small video of me and it went to Cannes Film Festival yeah that's right yeah this is a 15 year old kid and I filmed the China Banks for him you know because it was part of his homework nice i went yeah. back and, i went back and did it for him i tried to get a hold of him to get his angles but i never could get a hold of him but he's whatever. like a shaman now he's like a shaman oh really okay yeah he covered uh that's cool are you uh, still rolling around these days no i'm trying to set up a skateboard still to tell you the truth um but yeah once i get my parts together i think i need to actually get back on and push around and I just put my face in the groups a little bit you know like some yeah. of the young people like the young crowds i know like over there in um stanion street the skate spot it looks amazing over there uh-huh i i need to get out a little bit just just play i know i i know myself though i always try to you know you know i kind of push myself a little but you know at my age now i try to be safe you know i don't want to like hurt myself um do you ever drive around and look, see anything that could use some Valdez spice on it? I think to the day that I'm not breathing, I'm not, I'm, I'm always going to be looking at obstacles, you know, like that's the beautiful thing about like having skateboarding be embedded in you, you know, like everything I look at when it's structure outside, once I look, step outside, I'm always looking at like, Oh, I could skate that. Right. And, and you know, I, I miss skating, but um, I don't miss, hurting myself or taking yeah. those chances anymore because you know taking them chances you know 
it's not worth it when you're when you're up there in age. I, I want to just try I, to live out. I want I, you know. Then it was like I don't know. It was different. I was in a different lifestyle, a different setting. You know, um, my mind was a lot more like absorbed into like my my I don't know a different psyche part of, of myself. You know, you know, you got to think. You know, a different channel of my memory was, you know, it was, it was gathering all these, you know, tentacle electrical currents you know that was just kind of giving me power you know just to to survive through these things you know? <laughs> yeah i wasn't doing it by myself buddy you know i mean yeah i had the i had the thought and the ambition to 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 get on my skateboard and do something different but there's definitely something else holding me up man because i'm telling you i was i don't know how i made it this far you know like doing the, some of the things that i mean there are things that i did that i, I don't know how i survived it yeah, well, the the older we get, the harder it is to bounce back too. I hurt my ankle, and it's been like two months that it's still like not yeah. better. I know, and see, I, that happened to me not <laughs> long ago, where I hurt myself, and it took months. Yeah, you know, and I'm really into like just trying to train myself to just be quality body, strong, and you, yeah, know, you look good. Like, you you've been going to the gym and stuff. Yeah, I do calisthenics. Is that like I was going to ask you what? did you replace skateboarding with to like, cause you need something to like, right. You have to it's sweat. Calisthenics. You have to, yeah. Calisthenics. So, yeah. So, you know, it's funny you say that. Cause like, man, I put a lot of my energy and style into like the way I train, you know, and like the energy, oh. the high energy is perfect for me. It's okay. the explosiveness, you know, it's like, I've, I've, I've created my, my training kind of like how I, how I've like created my world in skateboarding, you know, it is now like my, my focus is just like creativity. Well, not being too creative because like, you know, learning these skills and stuff, I'm learning skills. There's only certain ways. So I'm just learning like certain, I'm learning the way how to be safe, not, you know, just taking random risks and stuff and just flying mm -hmm. all over the gym, you know, yeah, just, just being smart about it. But again, having fun. Cause you know, that's what, that's what it should be about, you know? Has to be. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, dude, thank you for taking the time. I appreciate catching up with you. Always a Listen, pleasure. It, it was yeah. cool that one day I saw you, you were going to the Giants game, remember? You I were think, oh, I think you oh, were yeah. working at the Giants. I game. was working, yeah. You were with your lady? Yeah. We I was coming home with no, I think I was with my dog. Um we, we were going home and you were you were going the other way. Oh yeah, that's right. I was with a lady, right? You were with a lady. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was one of my coworkers. Yeah, we're going to the game. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. It was so natural and just like it was like fresh and awakening, you know? Yeah, it was nice. Uh so yes. is ev everything's going okay? You, you you're doing good? Yeah, I'm good. I'm just you know, um, you know, sorry about our earlier about not really communic contacting with you, you know, like visiting with my mother and you know, it's like she's already like in her 80s and she has cancer and oh. you know, like this is like trying to deal with her and her situation and like what what only I can, the only things that I can do and stuff, you know, is not too much, but be there for her support. Um, yeah. And then and then just coming back to the coming back to the city and just, you know, getting back into the groove of stuff. Um, I'm kind of like right before you. It's funny because like I had a job interview via zoom huh. and it, the guy who interviewed me was like funny because he was like he can't believe he's like I, I gave him the best interview that he's had because he couldn't believe that he met joe valdez he's like dude i looked up to your skating like how did oh my god no way so he's like yeah so i was like i was like dude it's it's funny because like we got to talking a little bit about like oh um the the dime and you know like how um how that all like became like how i became part of that and just like you know, um, just everything, you know, cause he's following the diamond stuff and wow. That's amazing. What kind of work are you looking to do? Oh, well actually, you know, something close to by where I live, you know, I applied at the Joe and juice. Oh, okay. A cafe at the airport. Well, first, first check. My name's Joe. <laughs> oh, I know. I know. <laughs> oh my God. So you say you'll be for sure here for me. I don't know. Like, I don't know. I just, but, you know, like, I, I was humble and respectful to the young man, but it was amazing. Like, he couldn't believe, like, he was talking with me, you know, like, it was a little like, it was just like, oh, my God, he's, he's like, I love it, dude. You know, it was how, his, how he felt so, like, kind of like 
how he meets a lot of people, you know, but this happened to be like a really a great moment for him. And it was just, it was great. Um, Being noticed and, you know, respected oh, and those yeah, kind of things, the, they're, they're so important. Yeah. And then just like with the history of like what I, what I did in the past, you know, my skating and how skating is different now, but like how much like, how some of it's changed a little bit of how skating is and i don't know it, it's definitely touched him so I, I feel i feel great but yeah nice well uh we always end it with some music you got a good tune you've been listening to lately any any song you that you'd want me to um, throw on let's see um let's see check your old uh playlist and see what the most played is or oh yeah what gets you um, fired up at the gym Oh, 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 maybe it's some um, Eco Mouse. Oh, I love Eco Mouse. We always listen to Eco Mouse. The, the, which one? Um, where's my baby? Okay, sick. Hey, dude, <laughs> much love, dude. Thanks for taking the time. Yes, man. Hey, and I got you a skateboard too. Okay, I got you some stuff too. Um, after, uh, text. Text each other because hey, I need uh, Antoine's contact too. I want to yeah, get a Antoine, hold of him. for sure. That'd be, I, fu- that'd be fun, dude. That absolutely, buddy. We'll keep in touch, okay? I promise. I'll show we, you that book too that I have that I was told. Oh yeah, I didn't tell you about the book, did I? No. I what's the, the book? book? Yeah, let's hear it. It's a it's a it's a book where this woman she 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 gave me a full. Oh, so I kind of reveal some private information. Well, not private because the world knows, but the world has been misguided for so many years. And in the book, I reveal the true answer of what? Because you know, on the, you know, on, on Hubba Hideout. Yeah. Did you ever think that I only manual the whole entire Hubba Hideout? Yeah. You know that's Sean Mitchell, right? Oh, that was Sean Mitchell, and they everyone gave you the credit. Yeah, and I don't know why for so long, like people were like, "Yo, Joe, man, that's so dope." I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about. I did start it off, but Sean came and finished it for me. Like I, I did my my vision was to manual Hubba Hideout. I couldn't do it, but my vision, and I did, I I did touch one time. I did do it, but I touched. It doesn't count, right? Uh-huh. I touched like at the end. Okay. The last part where you come down, I touched at the end. That son of a bitch. <laughs> well, do you have a, the but, book? Show the book. What is the book? Oh, the book. Oh, it's right here. You think you can see it? Yeah, for sure. It's called Styles Matter. Whoa, Style Matters. Yeah. Oh shit! You know what? I think I have that book. I think the girl. It's a girl, right? Yeah, yeah. It's her name She's, is Ibrand. She dropped it off at Phil's Coffee, my local coffee place for me. Dude, so I have two things in there. The two interviews, and I have a whole interview in there. And I talk about, like, people who think that I did it. Is that true? I didn't do it. Sean did it. Um, I started it off, but Sean ended up doing it for me. And it's okay because her homies, you know. It's not like, if I didn't do it, my homie would do it. It's okay. But... I did. I attempted. I wanted to go China Banks to do it. I ran up there and be like, "Oh, I want to go skate there. I'm gonna, I want to do something there." Uh huh. Oh no, I was all wrong. Finding what to do there while skating, we're just like randomly just trying to find stuff to skate there. And I was like, "Oh, I want to manual it because you can in the back. You go all the way in the back. There's a ledge that connects there." Ah, uh, yeah. And it's funny, like, and it just so happened, like, where we're skating during that time, um, toy machine were was skating too. Oh, they're really? they out and about skating. And um Chad Muska thought I was on mushrooms. <laughs> really? Like, Joe, just sit down. Hold on. I was just please tell me, are are you are you okay? Are you are you sober? I'm Why? like, yeah. I was like, dude, are you on mushrooms? I was like, no, I'm just this is how I think. This is how this is just me. <laughs> he thought I was like high or something. Like, dude, what are you doing up there? <laughs> they're like, can we film you? Like, I think I uh, Jamie Thomas was like, can I film you? I was like, yeah, sure, if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, yeah, I remember Chad Muskie was like, sat down with me. He was like, here, bro, have a hit of this. Have a hit of this joint. He was like, he, he, smoked, he was smoking some of his joint with me. He was like, he was like really serious. Like, because he thought like I was on shrooms and he was just trying to be respectful and be like, you, what are you on? Like, <laughs> how much did you eat? Like, <laughs> oh my God, bro. Like, this is just me. Like, this is just how I think when I want to skate. I just do round. I just, I just rip. He's like, but you're not even filming. That was, they couldn't believe that I was like <laughs> out there skating, trying to manual, but I almost doing it. 
And like, dude, they were like, you're not even filming. And I was like, dude, I'm just having fun. Like, you know? Holy shit. They that's... just witnessed, they just witnessed the Valdez playing <laughs> in, in like play mode. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I love this. I know. Uh, hey, we're, bu- we're blessed, man. Our lives have been touched with a lot of rad people and stories and yeah. really cool things. And, yeah, man. Never, then, never doubt yourself. You, you've, you've yes. been a big part of the the scene for like some important moments in San Francisco, and you've influenced a lot of people. Yeah, I, I feel that's really what I wanted to do in in my in my career in skateboarding. If you know, and 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 you know, sponsorships and stuff that only came secondary. My purpose of what I really wanted to do was to enlighten those you know who who use it and take it for themselves and use it. And become mm. who they are truthfully, who they are gifted with, you know, not some something else. You know, you don't have to be like Carl Watson. You don't have to be like Tom Penny, you know. You can be like mm-hmm. yourself doing your own big things, you know, your own big way, you know. Right. I, I think skateboarding needed to, like, look at skating in that direction and not just be so. Because for a while, everything was like a tunnel. Everything was just like tunnel vision, you know, like everything was just like only like focus on like technical flat lounge, small tricks, you know, you know, and it's like, you know, the big baggy all about pants the seven, and the small uh, wheels. Yeah. And then, you know, doing it all only on the ledges at pier seven or union square, you know, like, yeah. and you get all of San Francisco. That's what I oh, never understood. Yeah. Like you, all these, all this terrain, but you're just, you want to stay doing kickflip manual, tell slide whatever like you see that all you see that in every video Mm -hmm. you know yeah there's lots of spots in this seven the the city's only seven miles square you know but there's a lot in it yeah condensed for sure i mean even today like i'm i'm finding stuff that you know like you said like i always going to be looking at obstacles like can i skate that right um I know whenever I drive down the freeway or just through with my wife, I'll be looking at something. And she'll be like, what are you looking at? I was like, I can't explain it. It's, I know. Like, it's the skater mind looking at something that like just looks like a normal thing. And you're like, no, but maybe. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm, just glad, I'm glad I'm glad that I the, the, the path that I've chose and the, the, the publicity that I've gained is it, it, it's, it's, it's right where I wanted it to be, you know, you know, without putting anybody at risk or, you know, putting myself at risk, but the things that I had to do and endure and go through, I, I know what I had to do and the chances that I had to take, you know, like I feel like those chances in life and taking those rest, life risk chances was, was only meant for me <clears throat> because of the life that I was living and then the challenges that I was having to face in my time and, and upbringing and surviving here in the Bay area, you know, like, you know, between good and evil and, you know, I'm like right in between, you know, like definitely having good be on my side, you know, I think helped me be like more focused in, 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 the, in the chances that I took, you know, like mm. feeling like, like I was part of like the good team, you know, like I was here meant to do good things and, 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 and just be righteous about it, you know, and, and um, I think it really made sense how it really like like all came together for me you know even after like a lot of years had passed like it's okay it's happened past i mean usually like when you get recognized you know kind of things go for you then you know like you get like support all throughout you know but now it, it, it was never like that for me but it's okay i don't mind I, you know I, I i'm glad that I wouldn't ever change like what I had to struggle through to get to where I'm at, to where I'm at now, you know, and, and, it, and it was never about like free product or anything like that, you know, for me, even though like I could have been useful because I was homeless for so many years, <laughs> but um, you yeah. know, it's okay. Like, you know, I, I still survived and I made it happen. And um, <clears throat> um, I was going to say like, uh, um, yeah, no, the, um, the whole, like, the highlight of me and how I how I become recognized um, through like time and um, it, it's it's just great that people are realizing like it was for the what, moment, what, not for the actual uh, like you you were doing it for the moment, not for like to get some wheels or something else. Yeah, like that. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. I believe that, man, for sure. Yeah. Like that's, I mean, the passion is, it's obvious. It's, it's very clear. Like that, that it was a passionate thing. And uh, I think Mm -hmm. that is what everybody (sighs) absorbs is like your passion might be different from my passion, but I really, I appreciate your passion because mm-hmm. I, I think passion is important for people. Like, yeah, you can't, you don't want to do anything half ass. You don't want to just like mail it in. You want to like be stoked. And like the way to be stoked is like to improve and to create, like do mm-hmm. your own thing and improve upon it. And if you keep doing that, you're going to be happy. For sure. I, I'm so glad you shared that Matt, Matt O'Brien story. You know, oh my Matt's god. That's the homie, dude. I love Matt and he, he he's got love for you too. Like I I, I forgot that you guys work together, but I was so yeah. stoked on he wrote me this little blurb and I was like, Yeah, that's great. It's amazing. And that's what people know. He's the one that he, he did the art in, in a um what is it, real? The little angels? <laughs> He did the slap angel. No, yeah, slap angels. Yeah, yeah. slap angels. He might have done something for real too, because he rode for real. No, I think a I just bit. made. My, yeah, uh huh. But he did do that iconic slap angel. That's like that was one of their big logos. <laughs> I know. Matt's the best. He yeah, lives up in is, Portland now. That's so awesome, man! I'm so I'm so humbled and grateful to have been part of your um, talking Schmidt, and um, thank you for allowing me to be presented here on your on your podcast bro like, uh, it, it's it means a lot I'm, no I'm thank glad. you it means it means a lot to me i love yes little yes. eco mouse to take us to out of here on the drive home yes yes sir well yeah reach out anytime dude you know okay. that and thank good, you good to talk to you thanks so yeah, much Yeah, we'll have a coffee we'll grab coffee and uh I get yeah. you that board and yeah, man, we'll keep in touch. Okay, bud. For sure. Take Much care of yourself. Okay. You take care. Bless. Thank you for listening to another episode of Talking Schmidt. You can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Anchor, Spotify, or anywhere you get your podcasts. When you subscribe, you'll get notifications every Tuesday of new episodes the minute they become available. Also, please leave reviews and a five-star rating. It's the best way to help the show grow. All of the episodes will always remain free, but if you would like to help support the show, you can do so at TalkingSchmidt.com, where you can pick up some merchandise like t-shirts, beanies, hats, and stickers. The website has an entire archive of all of the episodes, with extra photos and videos. Email us with any suggestions, comments, or ways that the show may have improved your life at TalkingSchmidt at gmail.com. All interviews are conducted, edited, and produced by Schmitty. The intro music is Mary's Cross by the band Nature. A very special shout out goes to the executive director, Cheryl Camisa. Shout out. Love it! This is Talking Schmidt, where the Rolodex is deep, but the conversation is deeper. Keep the wheels greased.